Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today we're going to be blasting Monsunga Was Right, Appalachian Noise Records, 20 strands of barbed wire. Mr. Danger himself, fucking wow. If you're a fan of agoraphobic nosebleed, pig destroyer style grind, throw a wrestling theme at it, and yeah, it's amazing, especially if you are a wrestling mark like myself. Sadly, this is sold out at the moment, and I don't know if Appalachian Noise is going to remix this. Normally, I don't review CDs and it's because I made a promise a long time ago to keep this channel digital but I actually made myself a dubbed copy of this using my old CD player and tape deck and after like an hour of cleaning I got it to work so we can listen to it in here and yeah be able to technically cover a CD because this is great and it's something I, I have to go over regardless like first off it's total like I said agoraphobic nosebleed pig destroyer worship but with song titles like gassing up the weed whacker the Mr. Pogo influenced fear the sickle it's great Steakhouse Retirement, Fuck Off, Eddie Gilbert, Heat Wave 98, Sabu Botches a Table Spot. Like, I'm geeking, and I haven't even mentioned the bonus 21 track. It's the funniest fucking rib at John Zandig ever. If you don't know John Zandig, I'll put it this way. He's one of those red hat guys, and, uh, yeah, he's kind of, he's kind of an asshole, from what I've been told. I've never met the guy, but, I mean, he almost did kill Joey Janela. So, I mean, Joey was the one that instigated it by asking for that match. And, hey, he's on cable TV, wrestling an AEW, and then still, you know, supporting GCW and I have nothing but respect for that like I you know jokingly wore these shades because this is a release about pro wrestling and whenever I see these these aren't vipers either these are LA brights which brings me back to my childhood because I used to have these LA brights gloves and like these pants that when you would wear them in the snow, they would change different colors and shit. Fucking, I thought they were the coolest things ever. But when my buddy threw these in to um, like a gift box he gave me, I was like, oh shit, because we were going to, well, I'm not going to spoil it, but there's a skit coming soon. But um, since... To me, these just remind me of power lifters, pro wrestlers, and mostly, you know, that one Slayer promo photo where, like, Kerry King has a pair on. But, um, anyways. Mansunga was right. 20 strands of barbed wire. Everything about this is fan-fucking-tastic. It's fun. It's fast, it's vicious, it's grind. And you can look at it as just a joke. It kinda is, but if you're in on the joke, it's fucking, oh my goodness, it's amazing. Like not only is the grind like, really sounds like agoraphobic nosebleed, agor pop, agor agorpocalypse. The last release they did they were supposed to do the fucking EP series. I had Arch. I think I still do have Arch. I don't think I traded it. I might have traded it, honestly. But it was I Hate God Worship by Agoraphobic Nosebleed. It was awesome. But 
that's really what like Matsunga was right reminds me of is agoraphobic nosebleed and pig destroyer so like I said just if you're a mark for pro wrestling and you're a fan of grindcore you can't go wrong here like legit you cannot go wrong with this release and like I said they had a fire sale this whole weekend so last I checked sadly 20 strands of barbed wire was sold out but you know this is so worth searching out for like if you're a fan of like I said grind and pro wrestling this is essential folks seriously it's fucking essential listening like it's gnarly it's funny and what else can you ask for it grinds your fucking face in with a cheese grater up the side of the head and it's awesome like the hidden track especially again if you don't get it you don't get it but if you get it especially some of you might watch Botchamania so you're gonna recognize a certain sample that gets you used from one of the most infamous promos ever cut by John Zandig there was five of them just we're gonna wait till that part comes on just so you can hear how fucking sick it is because it as soon as I heard that sample I couldn't stop laughing like I legit was like geeking the fuck out because I had just watched the newest episode of Botchamania and I was listening to this while dubbing a copy for myself and out of nowhere after track 20 I'm like huh 21 and then it started and I was like oh my god like this is great and like the 440 Appalachian noise like uh, see again a lot of you might not have, have zero idea what I'm talking about here it's pro wrestling stuff but Appalachian noise records you know they sponsor pro wrestling events it's a label I really do get behind when it comes to things and like I said, that's, you know, normally I'd be like, ah, like, I I, I don't want to start a new CD collection, and I, I don't, but guess what's been getting played in my mom's car when we go to my nephew's house? Yeah. So it's kind of cool to have, like, an actual working CD again, and been using, well, the CD player that actually works is in the other room where you know when it's time to pack orders and stuff that's where it is and uh normally i'll just blast this but it doesn't play cds and if you were to look around my room right now you would understand why i can't start a new cd collection but uh this is just so good gigging for 12 people on a tuesday like i've lived it not in a pro wrestler way and again I am not a pro wrestler on the side, okay? So, just throwing that out there for the last time. Because I feel like I've answered the question way too many times. But, 20 Strands of Barbed Wire by Matsuga was right on Appalachian Noise Records. To me, this is, you know, as a wrestling fan, and especially growing up watching like FMW, IWA tapes and stuff. Not IWA Mid-South, I'm talking IWA Japan. Because my dad used to take me to the ECW arena and he would give me like $25. And normally instead of buying like an ECW t-shirt, I would go buy a Japanese deathmatch wrestling tape because that's what I was getting into. But... I never took the steps to learn some in-ring, like, training. 
Like, I can call a match, don't get me wrong, but, like, I've never, like, taken a barbed wire bump or anything like that. Light tubes, like, y you've seen me and have videos, probably, if you've been following me for a while, like, breaking the light tubes over Donato's back. Free Rob, by the way. Rob's still locked up, but, um... Yeah, you know, like, like yesterday, my mom actually, uh, she's like, I'm sorry I broke your light tubes. And I was like, ah, because like, Tournament of Survival's this weekend, and I was going to give some weapons to a friend of mine that I made. But, um, yeah, you, if you saw that live stream, I actually ran out of duct tape. But the light tubes I was going to be using for the Fans Bring the Weapons match... Yeah, they got broken. So yesterday, I got mercury all over my fucking pants. But these things happen. I uh, keep this part right here. Jesus! So many others have stood where stand. Fucking great. We are the young, so raise your hands. We got a bad guy, guy. We got a bad guy, guy. We want the end, guy. We are the king, guy. What happened to me? Man, fuck Zandig, you fucking red-eyed piece of shit. Jesus! <laughs> so fucking good. Monsunga was right. 20 strands of barbed wire. You got Mr. Pogo on the cover and Mr. Danger himself. Like, my nephew yesterday, like, because I kept saying, I was like, because we were having a wrestling match. I mean, we have fake wrestling matches. We use, like, pillows as barbed wire and stuff. And uh, I showed him the infamous Piranha match. And uh, he was like, are those real? <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're real piranhas. Because story has it that Monsunga got a big chunk bit out of them by the piranhas. I mean, there was some gnarly stuff in Japan in the 90s. When it came to bringing, bringing animals into wrestling matches, yeah, it's kind of, you know, not cool for the animal, especially the alligator. <laughs> like, Monsunga versus an alligator? Like, what the fuck? Japan's crazy when it comes to deathmatch wrestling, and it's one of the reasons that I got into it to begin with. As a fan, not as a professional Slash independent wrestler. I never took the steps to do that. Like I said though, I kind of do want to referee. So I might... I did hit up the bulldozer, Matt Tremont, actually. And was talking about, you know, maybe joining um, H2O. And getting some, you know, lessons and whatnot of how to... Because I can call a regular match, you know, like, especially if somebody's talking in my fucking ear, but that's not going to happen on an independent wrestling show. You got to be like, you know, you got to know what's going on, and I'm not going to go any more into it because I don't want to spoil what pro wrestling is. And you might be like, what the fuck? You know that shit's fake, right? You want me to hit you upside the head with a fucking board that has gusset plates on it? And then, you know, tell me if it's fake or not. Yes, it's predetermined violence. But some of these bumps, thats it's no fucking joke. Like, for real. If you go back and watch, there's a documentary called Please Don't Die. It's about Joey Janela's bump 
famous bump he took with Zandig. And if you watch it, they're legit probably six inches from dying. Like, John goes feet first. Like, they go off this gnarly fucking roof. It's about 30 feet. Like, no joke, like 30 fucking feet. Way crazier, I think, than... Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I apologize. But all this stuff is available to watch online. The Sick Nick Mondo bump. That is so brutal because he finished that match with, like, an artery leaking. Like, oh, man. John broke his back, I think. Oh, no, John broke his back on the second bump with Joey Janela. But that's the one where, like, it's bad. It's really bad. They're, they do it into the back of a pickup truck. But you know how some pickup trucks have those cages? Well, like, they have all these light tubes and shit and barbed wire and tables set up inside of it. Thankfully, they didn't light it on... They, wait, they might have lit it on fire, actually. Or maybe the... I forget off the top of my head. It might be the Sick Nick... Mondo, uh, bump that has the flaming, uh, tables. But, uh, it, no matter what, both of those bumps are worth checking out. They're both gnarly as shit, but the one that's at the first GCW Deathmatch Tournament, I think it was the, it might have been, like, Zandig's Tournament of Survival, at the time, I think Nick Gage got locked up again. Again, I'm a little hazy sometimes when it comes to that type of stuff. But, you know, if you're looking for a soundtrack to watch Deathmatch Wrestling to, this is the perfect one right here. You're in, you're out, you get a good laugh in, and you also get a nice grindcore assault in. It's awesome. Appalachian Noise Records, Mansunga was right, 20 strands of barbed wire. And as always, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. Thank you to all my Patreons, Patreons, whatever, people that support this channel from the bottoms of their hearts. Eric Pike, Julian, Ryan Savage, Liber Lilith. Nick Dwyer, Florian Blake, Matt Binks, Skyler, Dominic from the UK. I hit you up about a show that's happening on Camden, UK. Slime Lord with fucking Onslaught. Yo, check it out. I put it on the uh, Patreon front page for anybody that lives in the UK. It's a sick show. I highly recommend checking it out. Aaron Krang's henchman. Stefano. Jeremy Jansen. Hagbard. Chris Rice. Impending Doom. And as of right now, that's all I really know. That's all I've written down. If I missed your name, I apologize. But without you folks, you know... I still would be making these videos, but it is, you know, it makes it feel a lot like, I don't know. It puts a smile on my face knowing that you folks are down to support the channel. That's pretty much like, you know, fucking A. Like, I'm doing something right that folks are like, hey, we want coffee time videos. We want more smoke time videos. You'll get that stuff. I'm still trying to do the box of stinkers. But I was told, hey, if you want to do that, you have to set, uh, you know, like, when you get $100, you do a video like that. So, all right, I'll make a deal with you. If the Patreon hits $100, we'll do a live stream of... <laughs> and I'm, like, dreading this because it's... The complete opposite of what this normally would be. Because it's going to be the complete opposite. It's going to be like kind of, you know, 
Yo, this band is fucked. Like, that type of, you know, like, what the fuck are we listening to? Because I have been sent some very weird shit. So, like, yeah. It's going to be sick. Even if we don't get $100, like, I'll still do it. Like, just because. Like, why the fuck not? It's something I've been wanting to do. It's just somebody was like, yo, you need to set an incentive. And so there's the incentive. If it hits $100, I'll do it. 120%. Like, you have my word. So, you know, I'll put the link in the video description. You guys don't have to. Like I said, I mean, you know, we're pretty close, though, already. I think need, like, 15 more dollars, and it will be there. But I don't really care, you know. I'm going to make the video regardless. But if you want to support the channel and know that, like, this video is being made because of you... That's how you do it. I was told to let you folks know at the beginning of the video, but again, I'm sorry. It makes me feel like a whore. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but I'm not. Like, I'm just trying to make the channel as, you know, sick as possible. And it's just, it's more, it's a lot of work. And I just appreciate the fact that you're even watching this 21 minutes in. So, fucking heavy hails, total support. Thank you to Krang's Henchman for making today's video possible. Appalachian Noise Records and every single independent and professional wrestler that puts their life on the line every time they strap on their boots and go out to that fucking ring. Like, give them a round of applause. And I know I missed saying this on Memorial Day. Your service, folks, if you are a military person, like, seriously, thank you for everything. Since, you know, in, in my lifetime, since 9-11, like, that's when shit, to me, got real serious when it came to the military. I wanted to join the Navy, and I'll be dead honest with you. I got shook about the war. I was like, I don't want to go. I, I don't, I'm not ready for something like that. Like, I had already turned down art school. I, I didn't, well, film school. But, like, I didn't know what to do. And my dad was like, I joined the Navy on a Friday. Got out. He, and that was Korean War. But my dad was smart, was a weatherman. And every week, they would have to take a test. And that test would see if you were getting combat duty or if you were just watching the radars. And my dad somehow did not ever have to engage in combat. He was pretty much their weatherman. And I'm glad he really he taught me how to read like Doppler and stuff and... As a bike rider growing up, that shit was important. Like, knowing, like, oh, well, why don't we go to the skate park Monday and Thursday because it's supposed to rain? Like, that was life. And, again, I could ramble on and on, but I'm going to shut the fuck up and let you folks get on with your day. It feels weird. I keep thinking it's Monday, but it's Tuesday. But, again... Thank you to all uh, all of our soldiers in, you know, America. Even if I don't agree with, like, you know, why we're in Iraq and whatnot, I'm not getting into that because it takes just balls to even sign that papers. Like, just props to anyone that's ever been in the military. Like, fucking A. And as always... Thank you at home for watching, you fucking rule. Hey. <laughs>